This is Austin St. John, Jason, the original Red Ranger. You are watching the Morphin Network. <laughs> oh, God. My boy. They did my boy spot wrong, bro. They did my boy spot wrong, man. I thought Mitch got done dirty by Chris Jericho. But, man, man, they, can't, they killed my boy spot, dude. Hashtag hey. plant life matters. <laughs> okay, you said that. I did. Hashtag plant life matters. Plant life. Plant life matters. Wait, that's a plant with the fedora. Quiet. It's it's spot. That's the wrong. That's not even spot. It's spot to me. That's not even spot. Oh, quiet it's spot. You're a phony. Hey, everyone in the chat is coming in. This guy's a big fat phony. He don't know about fine. spot. Fine, fine. This is spot. Fine. Hash there you this go. Is my only memory of spot. That is much better. That is much better. Today, episode Ranger Podcast Live. We have my, me, my awesome, uh, the awesome host and creator of this awesome network. D Ryan, aka Dagger Boy, and we have Joe. my Shash. We have my partner in crime, Psycho Fox. The, 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 we have the, the, the true champ, the true champ. Y'all, y'all, you, you all love me. I'm joking. Hey guys, sub. Have, happy uh, Thanksgiving week. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving week, and we have uh, the teddy bear, our awesome uh, mascot, Kaiser Red Kent. Thank you, Chinchilla. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the amazing and wonderful, beautiful third cheek herself, Naomi. Hola! <laughs> I like, let's get it started, Naomi. Let's you see, start the review, please. Start no, off no, the episode, no. what happened? Okay, so far, like, on episode 18, like, Steel was wa wandering around, wondering if what it would be like to have a pet. So, then, apparently Nate decided to offer him to take care of this plant. And maybe if it goes pretty well, possibility he might get a pet, in which he did. So, what are your thoughts on that, you guys? <gasps> Spot. Spot was look. Spot got done. Spot was done dirty. I want to pour forty out to my boy Spot. So where is it? Oh wait, that's just my, that's my piggy bank. Never mind. I'm, I'm gonna pour out an imaginary forty ounce to my boy Spot. So, of all, the, of all the souls that we have encountered, he was the most human. <clears throat> he was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> plant lives matters. They actually are alive. <laughs> oh, yeah. It matters. Sure, plant, lives matters. plant lives matters. Plant life matters. <laughs> I hate you, Ryan, so much. It was Why? interesting. Um, I like it how they put more human emotion, human um, emotion on steel. Like, he actually wants a pet, and I actually like that. And, yeah, I say it's a good development episode for or steel. Uh, yeah, it was uh, interesting. I it was uh cool and to you know see steel, you know, being all like, "Hey, I want to try my more human side and you know, something he can care for and all." And yeah, it was it was a uh, kind of touching and very interesting steel episode. And later on in the episode, it ties into something I told, asked you guys about last year, but we'll get onto that soon. <laughs> I'm I'm happy that Steel got his solo um episode because we've all because no, more more normally you know it's Nate and Steel or just Nate and it's cool to see that Steel guys episode and Steel Steel legit pun in, all pun intended stole the show yeah and he saved the day of course yeah so another scene that I noticed like what are also your thoughts regarding of how um. The monster. Well, I. Like Vargoyle was managed to. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. He, he was able to uh, erase everybody's memories, which most of the people from, from the Ranger cast, I should say, uh, mistaken Roxy as the Ranger instead of the original Yellow Ranger that we have. So, what do you? What are your thoughts on that? Like, give me some details or like what are. Some things that you find shocking and all that. But it was clever. They went in disguise, you know, tying into, you know, Leonard's thing about black suit, black. Yeah. Are you, yeah, y'all, really? Really? Yeah. 
We're going to yeah. go there again. Yeah. That, I, I proved my point the last time. We're really about to go here again. Yeah. Y'all want round five? Seriously? Uh, but no, I think this was a really good idea. And we'll get into some that Ken and I discussed off uh, off the podcast last week. Uh, I think it was a great idea. And obviously, people of uh, Coral Harbor are not even going to know who the hell the Rangers are unless they're in Grid Battle Force. If you're in Grid Battle Force, you know exactly who they are. But it was it was interesting to know that everyone was af- affected except Steel. And that was because of the android side of his brain is like – yeah, uh, that's a no for us, dog. We're 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 a robot still. So, yeah, he he he's Ed from no, yeah, he's um, he's Ed or Al? He's Al from Full Metal Alchemist, the one with uh, where he he has his souls in a suit of armor. That he that's essentially steel. Yeah, I remember that. That moment reminded me a little more of a uh, cyborg from season three of the Teen Titans show where. Brother Blood was able to warp yeah, the human that too. Event, but his android side was, you know, able to not. Like, I was pretty surprised that Steel was not affected. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, please don't let him be affected too. But I was like, thank God. And then it leads to him, like, you know, trying to, you know, make the Red Ranger remember who he is and who he, who he is as a Ranger too. And somewhat, he kind of, Save the day along with steel. It's interesting. It's interesting that Devin still knows how to morph, even when his memories have been wiped out. I mean the yeah. the fighting the fighting part. I, him learn, knowing how to fight, I I don't I don't find that weird because it was already you know pinpointed in the pilot episode that he knew how to fight. Um, mm-hmm. so I had no problem with him still learning how to knowing how to fight. I don't know of like how do you know how to use the morpher if your entire memory got wiped out? No, um, so uh, what's the name? Steel actually taught me to use it uh, off screen. Off screen, but no, but thing is, we... but thing is, before before Spot got vaporized, <laughs> um, he did say like I'll teach you how to use, it. I'll teach you how to do it. He just didn't show it. That was kind of sweet, though. A sweet. Scene. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's a tw- it's a twenty two minute episode, so they can't put all the stuff in there. <laughs> or, 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 you know, we could have had one where Steel was just like, "Hey, look, if you're trying to morph, uh, uh, just say these words, go, just do it, okay?" It was like when Sid and SPD when she was brainwashed and by this magician, like, "Do me a favor, say SPD emergency, okay?" And she's like, "SPD emergency, okay?" And then that okay. and break. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that hit me, like when Devin lost his memory on who he is, like I was so disappointed when he actually gave away his morpher. And I was like, why? Why? Why would you do that? I mean, Steel's like trying to help you remember. Like, why would you keep it in your arm, man? <laughs> oh my God. Hey, hey, he got. Hey, look, Grid Fal- Balforce pulled over, pulled up on him, pulled him over, and be like, "Uh, sir, I we need ju- we need that thing immediately." He ain't know. It's not his fault. On that note, I want to say we saw two guards at the front door, and all this chaos was going on, and like they didn't decide to rush over and see what was happening. I was like, Grid Battleforce security kind of sucks. Dude, we've been, bro. You, you're just realizing this, Ken. We, I, dude, I've been telling you how bad Grip Battle Force is, dude. Grip Battle Force don't know that the, they're swinging their elbows and their butts. Technically, their brains have been wiped out too, so they don't. They still think that that Roxy and Blade still work for them. So I know. No, he's fine. no. He's talking about how Devin and Steel were making commotion. Oh yeah. Know. Well, I mean, premises wise, thinking. yeah, but inside, I don't. No, I don't think so. No. I, Imagine premises the, like outside premises. I can just imagine <laughs> the security guards from Lightspeed, you know, who all they did was use riot shields to stop the battlings, and like they're just sitting in their retirement homes going, you know what, we did okay. <laughs> but up until that, like Steel and Devin run into another monster that's attacking them, which completely disintegrated the plant, of course. <laughs> so I think you. Spot! That kind of. <laughs> 
it kind of got to me uh, when the spot got disintegrated, but the way Steel reacted to the plan, like, I mean, it was the only thing that he can prove that he can, that he can take care of a pet, but I, his emotions kind of got up to me because, like, he tried so hard to take care of this plant and with all this negativity saying, like, oh, I proved myself wrong and stuff like that. Like, ah, uh, it kind of brings back out memories that, like, you can't, like, whenever you try to prove something, it always ends up in a bad situation. I'm surprised he didn't turn you... to John Wick. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm expecting <laughs> in the finale, Has Nickelodeon and Hasbro. I want John. I want Steel to like off screen because apparently we do things off screen to explain things in Power Rangers nowadays. Off screen, next episode, he had watched bo- all three move on all, all three John Wick movies, and now he's about to stab a monster with a pencil. Vargoyle's device no. allowed them to alter the memories of everyone in Coral Harbor to where they believe Blaze and Roxy had become Power Rangers and everyone else, you know, kind of just went on with their regular lives. And what's interesting about this, the de- a device that's able to alter people's memory. And last year you guys were questioning, you know, how can, how come no one ever mentions the Power Rangers? Like, you know, they are always going, like when a season used to start, they always be like, what's a Power Ranger? Or what's that? <laughs> stuff? What my I have a theory that, the government just erases people's memories of the Power Rangers to prevent world pandemonium. And this device was originally built by, or originally thought up by Blaze and Roxy themselves, who worked at Grid Battle Force. So I pitched for a Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger um, adaption. The Lupin Rangers are trying to keep the entire planet from knowing you know, that Power Rangers have been around for years. The, well, wait, the Lupins are trying to expose them. The Patos are trying to keep it all hush-hush. Very X-Files-ish season. So you want to make an actual Power Rangers Civil War, if that's the case. Yeah, yes. it almost happened in 2002. Uh, well, not three, really, the Hexagon, so you never Well, know. that was supposed to happen, but it went a completely different route with Ninja Storm, so... Well, you never know. That's a good... That's, that's a good... Yeah, for Hexagon. They might actually do that. I mean, now that Nickelodeon's t- partnered up with Netflix and everyone else, I mean, we could pitch to Hasbro, hey, let's make a Power Rangers Civil War. Just saying. One last hey, Hexagon. time. One last time. Good. But this... This is a war. If, in case it happens, it better be a good one. Like, a lot better than Megaforce. I mean, although it was good, <laughs> like, all the ranges were there, but, like, I would like to see better. Yeah, well, right. this one, well, this one, we're asking Power Rangers to fight other Power Rangers, and I know exactly who you should get uh, to help out with the like. So, Hexagon would be like, okay, Tommy, Tommy would be the leader of that side of the Power Rangers, saying we we gotta keep make sure our identities are kept secret, which is understandable. Tommy got a kid and a wife at home; he don't want the monsters to know. On the other hand, and this is gonna be an interesting one, you get Adam, who's like, nah, bro, the world needs to know. Okay, I'm Ichigo yeah. Kurosaki. I've got the Zampad toe and the Bankai and a Morpher. The world needs to know this. So, regarding of the conflict, like, it leads to another point that Steel and Devin have to get up to this tower and remove that device that's completely erasing everybody's memory. But ever since Devin touched it, since he's human, he could get electrified. Still, he could, but he managed to get up there anyway. And that was actually kind of one of the bravest things that he ever done, even though it's kind of risky and shocking. In a- um, so you, you said it was shocking, right, Naomi? Uh-huh. Like, shocking as in, you know, yeah. the pole is like, I was trying to make a joke out of it. Come on, guys. Oh, my God. Any- <laughs> anyways, but yeah, uh, it, was a, it was a good, like, uh, it, showed, it improved, I think it improved uh, Steel's character development better. They kind of. I'm not saying this because we've been we've been giving a lot of positive feedback about Beast Morphers. They almost had me. I low key thought Steel might. I thought Steel was going to bite the dust in this episode. Maybe come back in like the next three episodes, maybe like the finale or something. But they low key had me for a cool second. I'm like, they ain't gonna do that. Nickelodeon got they ain't Nickelodeon got what it takes. Oh, they might do. Okay, never mind. But good one though. They did do it. Wait, spot. But spot's a plant. <laughs> spot is a talking, living creature. 
Okay, we're talking about we're talking about a full cast. We're not talking about a character who's yeah. in one episode. One of the best characters in Beast Morphers. <laughs> and we the can't afford to lose him. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Leonard. And no, yeah, no. that scene really got to me. Like, I really I, I honestly think that it was actually really cool. And it also brings it it also brings to the point where, and I hopefully I touch on it, Steel could die. Like and when you see later on when Nate is trying to revive him, uh, and it was like if it wasn't for the fact that uh, Steel was able to reboot himself, there would have been a world of trouble. So this actually comes to mind. Steel, and I said this. Before, I said this when we when Steel and Nate became Power Rangers the very first time. Steel's a liability at this point, and the Power Rangers need to make sure that that fool don't die because if he dies, Evox got a body, and if Evox got a body. Thanos snapping everybody. Thanos snapping everybody. Okay, you have to bring that Avenger reference here. It's the inevitable. So after they revived Steel, like it leads to a happy moment and then leads to the epic battle and besides everybody getting their memory back and defeating the monster with their mega swords, Steel finally gets a pet. Mm-hmm. And what are the odds? Oh, you forgot one moment. That was that was epic. Vargol is dead. Oh yeah. Damn it. So um, what's funny about that scene was that's the one I was waiting and hoping that Beast Wolf first adapt because when I watch Go Busters, that scene was epic. And I'm glad it's they brought it in and it, to this day, it is still it's not as epic as Beast Go Busters did it, but I liked how they used it. So I want to yeah. give I want to give credit to Hasbro for find a way to adapt both the American and the Sentai footage because like that whole fight, that was clearly Sentai footage, but Devin getting to where he was to fight Vargoyle and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's American. And I got to give him credit for blending both American and Sentai footage. I am mad that Vargoyle's dead, but in the context of the story, it was the right call. I'm mad because Vargo was, it was becoming my favorite villain, and I don't like the fact that he's dead. But for the context of the story, I understand why he died. He, he, a means to an end. <laughs> All right. Hear me out. Still had to give the little dog away to a little girl. No, he just kept it. Just hey, 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 know, hey, 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 hey. But hear me out. Hear me out, guys. What Steel did, it was a good thing to do. I mean, once he got the pet, he finally realized, like, the big responsibilities a pet could have. And I'm pretty sure some of us that has pets, like, we, it's basically similar to investing a kid, but it's different compared to a pet because it requires food, medical care, and, of course, love. And the reason that Steel decided to give it to the little girl is she wanted someone to keep her company and she tried really hard to look for a little dog and that was actually kind of sweet that steel was so nice to was nice enough to give it to her mm-hmm. i have a problem with it though because uh, i won't be able to see a dog mascot in the next season anymore i was hoping to see that oh oh well but we have to set good examples and no. Yeah. I feel sorry for Nate. He spent his money now. I, Naomi, I, I, I would say this. Would you say what Steel did was human? What? Jesus Christ. Yeah! <laughs> Anyways, so we did find out that Roxy and Blaze's plan did work. They stalled the, the, telegra- the, t- the teleportation devices. And this is also stupid because how... So Ben and Betty... As global they can be, they've teleported across the world and even space. How are they alive when they're in space? Oh, well, technically, there's no logic because in Partners of Wild Forest, they bred in the moon, so I can't say anything about it. No, um, no, no, no. I got something better. I got something better. I got something better to say about that. So, throughout the entire time, we have been talking about how p- monsters and the power and the Blaze and Roxy and the Power Rangers are not able to teleport the uh, inanimate objects oh, out of the battlefield. Why did they pick this episode to finally do that? It's near the end, that's why. Well, no, 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 no. They were able to teleport inanimate objects out of the battlefield, Blaze and Roxy. They were able to take that damn satellite um um 
satellite thingy and yeah. teleport out. Meanwhile, they could have done that in the previous episodes, especially the one where freaking Roxy managed to bamboozle uh, Ravi into thinking she was a good guy still. How is it now they're able to teleport inanimate objects out of the battlefield? Technically, guess... they have to teleport, but for some reason, the Rangers don't. <laughs> Forgot to mention that Roxy plugged a flash drive into her uh her comatose self too. Oh yeah, it, well, uh, I know what happens, oh, but yeah. that I yet to find out. Very soon. I, me too. Me too. But I, I know. I'm happens, not gonna but... say anything. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. saying. Let's not mention it until the next review. But <laughs> yeah. um, crap. Now I forgot what I was. I forgot what I was gonna say now. But but yeah, like she installed that hard drive into her. Incubator. I mean, I call it incubator. So, incubator. So, what? so, what do you guys rate this episode? Uh, it will be an eight out of ten. Mm. Okay. Uh, Leah. Um, you call me a Leah? I'm not joking. Um, all right. I want to talk about my pauses real quick. Again, steel. Steel was the focus of the episode. Uh, the fight between the Red Ranger and Vargirl was really, really dope. Like it had, it, 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 it has what. Ryan likes to preach a lot about Power Rangers shows needing to have. It had stakes. This Spot. fight had stakes. Because Spot's dead and Devin doesn't have his memory back until the, in the middle of the until it, he gets it back in the middle of the fight. So they actually had stakes in this episode. Like and, and don't get me wrong, they've had stakes all, all most of the majority of the time in the episode in all Power Rangers Beast Warfers, but this one had like the biggest stakes because Steel was going to, was potentially going to die, everyone's memories were wiped out, and Devin was the only one left standing. I really enjoyed that fight. I really liked the, I, I liked how they did it with Roxy and Blaze ma- managing to um, wipe out the memories of everyone in Grid Battle Force and stuff like that. I enjoyed that, and I enjoyed the the cliffhanger. It doesn't really it doesn't end on a high note because of the fact that the last thing you see is Blaze and Roxy prepare for Phase Two of their plan. Like they're not they're gonna set out set Evox uh, free and probably get like half cipher half of his power to share to one to one another. Um, <laughs> My only my col- my col- only couple of problems I do have about this episode, um, and Kent's probably gonna um echo what I'm about to say. I honestly think this should have been two parter. This would this would have been a great episode to do a two parter about. Have it where Steel and Devin are the only ones left trying to uh fight off uh whatever little army Blaze and Roxy and Varguel set out to um to Coral Harbor. That would have been pretty cool. But at the same time, I understand, you know, your finale is coming up. Your season one finale is coming up soon. So I'm pretty sure you're going to save whatever you're about to do for like that episode. Overall, though, uh, and also, you know, Vargo's dead. But I know it, it's a means to an end. And, and they explain why because Roxy and Blaze were pissed that he was getting all the glory. And he was actually not incompetent. But yeah, I give it a, I give it a 9 out of 10. Great episode. Okay. Nice. I give it the same uh, <laughs> thing. I give it an eight out of ten. Actually. Um, like I said, I wish this could have been a two-parter. And like I've mentioned for a while now, this uh, this episode and another episode that's coming up remind me a bit of the last season of the eight Adam West Batman show, where that show they had lots of big episodes, but they all fi- they got the problem fixed in like twenty minutes. This is what that kind of reminded me of. Um, Var, I didn't think Vargoyle, like um, like him getting the abilities of the Rangers, was cleverly adapted in this episode. You know, because I read that, you know, in the Sentai footage, the Vargoyle's counterpart had the ability to run super fast as well. So that was cool. Um, but you know, it was a really I liked how, you know, Steel. You know, he was very. He was, like, he was used very well in the episode, you know, like how he detached his arm and, you know, was able to use that to get away from Ben and Benny. Um, but, yeah, I just, I, I think it would have been better if this was a two-parter. Like, maybe have the episode end with everyone's memories getting erased, or maybe, like, they're trying to and they fail, and then next week it would have picked up. Um what else? What else? There was one other thing. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. But yeah, I I enjoyed the episode. It's just I I wish it could have been a bit longer. So mm. 
Okay, so for me, I give it an eight out of ten. Um, uh, mainly because it should have been a two parter. I like the mistakes involved. I also felt this kind of felt a little rushed. That's why that's why I deserve it should have been a two parter. But again, it's the end of it's end of the end of the finale in like two weeks, so I don't see why. So maybe of course. But again, good episode, well written episode, well written again. Props to the dialogue. It's the reason why I don't write it like a nine or a ten. It's because it was kind of felt rushed. Um, there were some scenes that were kind of too illogical for my sense, <laughs> like oh. bra, like if we can invent it in space in deep galaxy. Well, again, everyone can read the Tap Hunter Galaxy, so I can't even argue. But anyway, Brian, Brian, you mm. said two weeks ago that. Power Rangers can pretty much do whatever they want, and now you're saying there were illogical things happening. Yeah, that's why I got. That's why that doesn't affect my score because you know. <laughs> um. But anyways, eight out of ten. The reason why it felt rushed, but that's pretty much it. It just felt rushed, and there were moments that could have been done better. I I think uh, the reason I gave it honestly the reason why the reason me I gave it a nine is because of the fight choreography. I I I I'm really big on fight choreography. I love when things come together like puzzles and stuff and the final fight between uh vargoyle and uh devin that's one big reason why i gave it a nine i love that fight i really do like the effects the practical parts that's why i enjoyed about it and the overall of the heel the super heel turn that blazing rocks did it was like hey guys i need you to give me some more of oh, that beast juice right it's like yeah change the plans vargoyle um we're gonna take that from you now and he's like really Screw it! I'm going. I'm going out swinging. Blast. Yeah, Terrell Dix says hi. Hello. Naomi Leonard, Ken Ryan, what's up, man? Hola. Hey, Terrell. <laughs> uh, Luis Espero says, Ryan, Leo. What's um, up, Luis? Miss you guys. Miss you too, bro. Hey, we'll see you at PMC next year. Yeah. Yeah. Genesis is Gen Pixar. Hard Hey, how Steel is my fave. I just think it's funny when he morphs. <laughs> I yeah, agree. Like, I totally agree with you, girl. <laughs> Louis says, I agree with you, Genesis and Laffa. <laughs> um, Terrell Diggs is saying, I miss the best of Power Rangers on ABC Family. I actually do yeah. miss that, too. What do they call it? No, was it, on, was it on ABC Family or Disney or Toon Disney where they called it Power Rangers Generations, where they had like a, a two hour block of back to back to back to back episodes? That was ABC. It was also on Jetix, too. I think it was Yeah, that was, that, was, that was Toon Disney. Yeah, it was yeah, uh, Jetix. Yeah. yeah, bro, Jax was lit, dude. You remember that card game? Yes. Yeah. Where you actually had to watch the TV show to get the cards? Yeah. yeah I know. Good old days. I forgot. Days. They couldn't remain with the name. Chadix is like super cool, better than Disney XD and Toon Disney. Okay, okay Toon one. Disney came first. Disney XD's okay. It's I. Avengers Design. Assemble's a great it, Avengers Assemble's a good show. All right, guys, we end this uh, like before we end this podcast. Like going with members, Leo, where can they find you? Uh you can find me stuffing my face with ham and um, greens, but uh, sweet uh, potato salad, sweet potato pies, uh, sweet yams, you name it. Um, but you can also find me on. You, uh, you can find me eating all your Thanksgiving food this Thursday, but you can also find me on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, the Reckless underscore Fox. Follow me on my YouTube page, Reckless underscore Fox. Find all my latest game content on Twitch.tv slash Reckless Fox. If you want a little more content, myself and Genesis do a podcast, the Struggle Game Podcast. New episode is up as of right now as this recording. Also, uh, my video on my issues of the Chun Li Ranger is on my YouTube page. If you want to hear some hilarity about why Jen is wrong and Chun Li Ranger should never exist, check it out on my YouTube channel. Tent, where can they find you? Huh? You can find me waiting for you in the parking lot. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, Tent, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram, Brian under slash K. You can find me on here on Market Network as well as my regular Facebook page. Uh, no, no, me, where can they find you? You guys can find me on my Instagram, Bride of Spider-Man, and also my YouTube channel, Pink Ranger 101. So stick around for upcoming videos coming up this week. And enjoy your sweet, delicious turkey. Ryan, where can I find you? There's a boy, 247, Instagram, and also please follow us at Morphin Never, Morphin Net. I, I enjoy your turkey or your family dinners. Stay safe, have a safe family trip where everyone's traveling. So, all right, this is Morphin Network. Sign out, guys. Bye. Enjoy your itis. Bye. Peace. Remember, the fun will never